So we all know that Space Marines are pretty broken, but today we're going to be talking not how they are too powerful on the tabletop or that I can't possibly beat them because Relic Contemptors keep killing my whole army. We're going to talk about how the 9th edition Space Marine release has mechanically broken a lot of units and Games Workshop has yet to fix it. What's up folks, welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. As always, my name is Trevi, and it's been about two weeks since the 9th edition 40K Space Marine Codex release that brought us a whole bunch of new mechanics for the faction. It brought us indexes and erratas for almost every Space Marine chapter, and luckily for us, brought us a whole bunch of typos that we get to talk about today and laugh at. As a real quick reminder before we get into the video, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that. It really helps out. We talk about a ton of 40k stuff on the channel. Lately, we've been doing a lot of data sheet deep dives where we talk about one profile or unit in depth and give a review of it. We do a lot of streaming of competitive 40k and talk a lot about the competitive 40k metagame and some funny rules stuff that comes up every once in a while, like we're talking about right now. So let's get into this video and let's talk about some mistakes that were made in the new 9th edition Space Marine Codex release. My hope is that Games Workshop will fix all these in relatively short order, but given their track record with some other rules issues that have come up in previous Space Marine Codexes, I wouldn't hold out hope too long. So first off, let's talk about the Space Marine Codex proper and some issues that have arisen with that. First up, we have Chapter Command. These are awesome upgrades. They let you spend some points to give some additional abilities to your characters. They represent the upper echelons of the command structure of the chapter. You get access to extra warlord traits and things, and they're really crucial to the power level of some of these really powerful characters like Masters of Sanctity and Chapter Masters. Now, the points level for all of these is given here. Or is it? Because if we look down at the back of the book, in the points value section, there's a different... There's a different list with different numbers on it. So comparing the two, we can see that the chapter master points values are the same. However, in this list, this list tends to be a little bit more expensive. Master of Sanctity is 10 more points. Master of the Forge is 10 more points. The Chief Librarian upgrade is 10 more points. I mean, they're, they're almost all 10 more points. Uh, they are, they, except for Chapter Master, they are all 10 more points. Whether this is a typo or a transposition or just one of these values was a playtest value that was changed in a later revision of the book, I have no idea which one we should use. I also have no idea. It makes, it stands to reason that, I mean, worst case scenario, you should use the higher value uh, just because that's fair. If one of these gets changed to be higher or lower, then uh, you're always safe taking the higher one. This, uh, the one here is also in the points value section of the book itself. It stands to reason that that would be the one you would use because it, I mean, it's in, it's a points value in the points value section. That's where you find points values. So probably the higher value is the one to, to go off of until uh, it's such time as it gets changed, but that's embarrassing to say the least. Next up, we're talking about the Primaris Apothecary, and this is a, a bit of a weird one. One thing that you'll notice when you compare the Primaris Apothecary and the standard Apothecary uh, keywords section is that the standard apothecary has something that the Primaris apothecary is missing and, th and that is the apothecary keyword. The Primaris apothecary has the Primaris apothecary keyword so it's almost the same thing but not quite. Why does this matter? Unfortunately the chief apothecary upgrade requires you to have that apothecary keyword that the Primaris apothecary does not have. So that sucks. You just can't upgrade a Primaris Apothecary to an Apothecary. Now, given the fact that they don't cost that many more points than a standard Apothecary, and you get, you know, the extra combat stats and the extra wounds, which are good for a frontline unit like an Apothecary, a lot of people want to be taking the Chief Librarian, or the Chief, <laughs> the Chief Apothecary on their Primaris Apothecary, but you can't do that legally in the rules. Whether this is a typo or not, I actually have no idea. It could be like a fluff thing. Games Workshop's like top-down design is so esoteric and complicated that I, I don't always understand it but i mean maybe there's an argument to be made that like the primaris guys require more training to to, to be promoted to a chief apothecary so it doesn't make sense in the background that a primaris apothecary would be a chief apothecary at this time in the universe because primaris physiologies are are new I don't know. It's probably a typo. They probably just saw that they had, he had the apothecary keyword in, in his unit name keyword, with, which basically everything gets, and thought that was fine and just forgot to add it in. 
Uh, but I mean, right now you can't upgrade him to a, to a chief apothecary. So that's, uh, that's too bad. Don't, don't be doing that. Next up, we have the heavy intercessor squad data sheet. And I talked about this a little bit on the space Marine first impressions video that uh, I talked about uh, previously in the weapon options here. We have a couple interesting variants of heavy bolter. We have the hellstorm heavy bolter, which is like a multi-shot weapon, a standard heavy bolter, which is just a regular heavy bolter, obviously, and an executor heavy bolter, which is less shots, but does more damage and has higher AP. You replace the equivalent bolt rifle variant with that type of weapon. So for example, you can replace your regular heavy bolt rifle with the regular heavy bolter. You can replace an auto bolt rifle with a hellstorm heavy bolter, or you can replace a stalker bolt rifle with the executor heavy bolter. Uh, one thing that you'll notice here though, is that none of these options are stalker bolt rifles or auto bolt rifles. <laughs> Clearly they meant to type in the, the new name of the of the weapon, of the war gear option, so the Hailstorm Bolt Rifle instead of the Auto Bolt Rifle, the Executor Bolt Rifle instead of the Stalker Bolt Rifle, but that never made it to this war gear section. So, while you can replace your regular Bolt Rifle with one of those variants, you cannot then currently replace the variants with the equivalent Heavy Bolter profile. Obviously, this is a mistake. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody could argue that that was intentional, but it is, <laughs> it is very funny to me. So those are the biggest errors that we found in the Space Marine Codex itself. Honestly, nothing like too game breaking and most of it can kind of be played around with the points level issue you can just play with the higher points level that's fine nobody's gonna have an issue with that the primaris apothecary i think is the only one that like actually needs to be fixed because it's not clear to me that the intention is that a primaris apothecary can be upgraded so hopefully we'll find out uh as soon as games workshop gains to, to bless us with a uh, with a, an errata but speaking of erratas we're gonna move over to warhammer community now and talk about the space marine i guess uh, the codex supplement updates that they gave out and the changes that they've made to each individual chapter because there are a couple pretty embarrassing errors in here. So starting with the biggest glaring omission, um, there's, no, there's no Black Templars section. If you search Black Templars, it, it, it just comes up empty. <laughs> they didn't get addressed at all. So as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, the Black Templars White Dwarf Index supplement is still legal for match play. There's no, with no changes whatsoever. All of the implications of that, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it means that they're the only faction in Space Marines that gets their chapter specific litany. It also means that none of their stuff is core restricted. None of their auras or their character abilities or anything like that. And, but it also means that none of their unique data sheets have gotten the core keywords. So I think they have their Crusader Squad data sheet, which is still not a, a core. So you, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't benefit from any auras or anything coming stock from the uh, from the codex. I don't know if this, they just forgot about the chapter. Uh, they're not being, they're not seeing a lot of, you know, sort of competitive play right now. So it's not that surprising. It is, it is pretty annoying if you're a Black Templars player and you're like, what am I supposed to do here? Next up, we'll go to the indexes. Uh, the, the Dark Angels one has a little bit of a minor error, uh, which is that the Terminator Interrogator Chaplain is listed under two different battlefield roles. Uh, so the Interrogator Chaplain here, as you can see, has the, uh, the, the HQ battlefield role. So you just take that in an HQ slot. The Terminator Inter Interrogator Chaplain, so the Interrogator Chaplain Terminator Armor, has the Elites slot. That's weird. We go down to the points values and under the HQ slot, we can find an interrogator chaplain in Terminator armor. Based on the evidence, it looks like this guy is supposed to be an HQ choice, but its data sheet says it's an elite's choice. Who knows? I think, I mean, you're probably safe playing it in HQ since the standard interrogator chaplain is in HQ, but uh, that's a little bit awkward. The big headliner in this section, though, is Ultramarines, because Ultramarines have, uh, well, there's one giant glaring error that uh, could potentially break 40k for about a week and a half until it gets repaired. First off, they've gone through and updated a bunch of the profiles to give them relevant keywords like core or to update their wounds to be in line with the new Tactical Marines being at two wounds. Uh, one of the changes here was to Tyrannic War Veterans. They got their plus one wound. I, I don't know if this is so much of a change as much as it's maybe just an oversight or, I mean, maybe it's fine because uh, Tyrannic War Veterans aren't exactly important, but they were not updated in any other way. So they are still 17 points a model, including their, um, their bolt gun. Even though they get upgraded to two wounds, they re remain at 17 points with a better bolt gun, with better rules than a tactical squad. They're just better than a tactical squad because the tactical squad obviously comes in at 18 points model. Now there, there is a trade-off there if you're taking the Tyrannic War veterans. They're not troops, so they don't fill up your troops allotment. They also aren't objective secured innately. So if you really want the objective secured, maybe the tactical squad is good to go at. But uh, I mean, for right now, I would be looking pretty hard at uh, Tyrannic War veterans because in, 
the comparison to a lot of other unit types in Space Marines, 17 points for these guys is actually kind of a steal. So that's that was a little interesting thing that I noticed. Also, I mean, Tyranids are, are kind of getting a little bit better in the meta. So having rerolls against Tyranids uh, could be good, I guess. Maybe if you're trying to fight those Gant carpet armies that win sometimes. The last thing we're going to talk about today, though, and absolutely the biggest one, is this little piece of war gear right here, the Seal of Oath. This, this change has been making the rounds, uh, I think, in the Warhammer community for a, a little bit, and uh, it, is, it is quite embarrassing on whoever's in charge of this FAQ. Oh boy, egg on their face. So for those who don't know, in 8th edition, or in the previous version of the supplement, the Seal of Oath was a relic or a special issue war gear that you would take, and at the start of the first battle round, you would pick an enemy unit, and everything within six inches of the model carrying the relic would get full hits and wounds against the unit that you picked. So it was very good against really big centerpiece units. If you had a big vehicle or a knight or something on your side of the table, you could hit it with the Seal of Oath, and the entire Ultramarine's army would uh, get all hyped up to shoot that thing right to death immediately. That's how the relic worked for, for, or has worked for the last year or so. The, this errata changes it entirely, though. The, I think the goal of the errata was to make it only affect core or characters, to bring it in line with a lot of the other aura abilities. Also, Ultramarine's got a lot of stuff that specifically now targets core, so it makes a lot of sense that they would try to, to change that around. But um, the job was bungled a little bit. Previous wording of the relic was that, you know, you chose an, a unit when you made an attack uh, with a unit within six inches of the bearer. Against that unit, you could reroll the hit roll and you could reroll the wound roll. Now... It just says when you make an attack against an enemy unit, you can reroll the hit roll and the wound roll. So for the low, low cost of your one free relic slot, your entire army rerolls all of their hit and wound rolls against your opponent's entire army. That's unacceptable. <laughs> that is too good. And I think it's pretty clear that this was a mistake. What is not unclear is what the ability does, which is give your like a 13 inch diameter zone where all of your stuff rerolls everything against all of your opponent's stuff. So, I mean, if, if you're playing by the rules, that's how this relic works now, so that's dumb. One of the reasons this is clearly a mistake is that the errata only changes the second sentence of the rule. The first sentence being, you choose an enemy unit. So right now, you choose an enemy unit, there's no reason for you to do that, and then you get full rerolls against their entire army. Uh, obviously, that was not the intention, but that is how it works. And so until this gets fixed, good job, Ultramarines players, you're doing it, you're winning now. <laughs> If I was an Ultramarines player, I would jump on this immediately. I would just go win a couple RTTs real quick <laughs> while you can uh, before before this gets changed back to how it's supposed to work. But uh, I would definitely expect this to get eroded. This is uh, definitely, I think, the most embarrassing change. Points, costs, and lost keywords notwithstanding. Whoa, is this unbalancing. Yikes. Uh, whoopsie daisies. Good old GW with their with their QA, really nailing it. Anyway, that's going to be the video for today. There's just a couple of misprints that we found in the Space Marine book overall this book actually has been pretty pretty watertight there's not a lot going on i think the points values uh, the weird points values and stuff for chapter command was like a little embarrassing but there's nothing in there that's like just straight up unplayable or broken or the wording doesn't work you know there's no there's no eighth edition tremor shells thank goodness i'm sure some some other stuff will come to light as people d dig into the book a little bit more but i just wanted to uh, to talk about this stuff real quick and i'm sure that gw will get on this within the next couple of weeks and fix it it's kind of embarrassing that they haven't already because this is like kind of no-brainer erratas but anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and uh, are planning on maybe using some of these sneaky little underhanded misprints to to win some cheeky games of 40k really crush your opponents down in the LGS real quick before it gets fixed. <laughs> As always, I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons. You can find them up on the screen right here. We're also just started a new YouTube membership program where you can sign up on YouTube. You'll get your name in the credits as well if you're in there. You also get a little badge on your YouTube account. You get access to emojis that you can use on our like premieres and live streams and in our comment sections, which is sweet. We just need a couple more people to sign up for that. We get to unlock a whole swath of new emojis uh, that we that everybody gets access to, so that would be sick. So if you want to support the channel and want to support everything that we're doing with Competitive 40K, go ahead, sign up for the Patreon, sign up for one of those memberships. Any support that you can give whatsoever is greatly appreciated. I want to thank everybody again for watching. Hope everyone has a great one. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.